For me, these three words are my Toastmasters journey so far. Because when I joined, I believed that I could lead. You want to know how I joined Toastmasters? Anybody here have heard of this word called speechcraft? I was a speechcrafter. And when I joined speechcraft, I had no clue that Toastmasters was behind it. I attended a couple of sessions. It was a six session program. And when I attended a couple of sessions, I had to discontinue it because I had to travel. And once I discontinued the third session, there was no way that I was going to go back. And as it can be predicted, I did not continue my program. But one day, after it, all, it was all over, I got a call from my assigned mentee at Speechcraft, at assigned mentor at Speechcraft, and he said, I want to meet you. I said, yeah, I know I did not attend the program. You don't have to scold me. He said, no, I want to give you your certificate. I said, certificate for not completing the program? He said, no. In Speechcraft, we give certificate to everyone who enroll. I said, wow, I get one more certificate to my collection. So I decided to meet him. And when I go to meet him, he was there, but not with the certificate. He was there with a packet. And the packet was a new member joining kit. He said, you did not complete the program. So you are going to become a Toastmaster carry forward your two speeches and complete your journey of becoming a competent communicator. And that's how I became a Toastmaster. This was five years ago. Now the first word you see on the board is lead. When I entered Speechcraft, I believed I could lead. But when I entered Toastmasters, I thought I'm a leader because Toastmasters say where leaders are made. Then eventually, I got into this called leadership where they made me the club president. And that is where it all ended for them but began for me. How many of you in this room resonate with the same kind of feeling? You become a leader and people around you suddenly vanish. Yeah? Those who have made you the leader especially vanishes. And then you are discovering them, but in the process of discovering them, you discover leadership. You're trying to find them. And once in a while, these people come down, come down to your life and say, we knew you could always do it. They are not telling you to encourage you. They are actually telling you that we are around you. We just want to be around you, but not get in your way. You do it. So today I'm going to make an attempt to put down a concept in front of you, which is right way leadership. Now let's see how it works. Next slide, please. You see some Chinese there? Thank your district director, Kelly, for helping me put those Chinese alphabets over there. Thank you so much, Kelly. I am not going to make an attempt of reading that to you, but I am sure that you can help me in putting it up. Do you know that? Does it somewhere relate to the word which I am talking about, right-way leader? Yes? Okay. Now, why am I introducing thumbs up? In our Toastmasters meeting, we have the thumbs up, right? But now, in your life, you got to use the thumbs up whenever you feel you are a right-way leader. That's going to be something which I'm going to leave it in Guangzhou when I go back to India. Let's go on to the next slide and see how it works. Next slide, please. Now, there are a couple of things which I want to talk about. I borrow the story from DTM Nagaraja Rao. 
How many of you heard that story? But for the benefit of all of you, I'm going to repeat it. But the story of Gandhi. The story where a mother takes her child to Mr. Gandhi and requests him to tell the child not to eat sweets or to rather give up on sweets. And Mr. Gandhi replies, I cannot do it now. Come back and meet me after three weeks. I will give it a try. And after three weeks, when the mother takes that arduous journey and reaches Mr. Gandhi, Mr. Gandhi looks at the child, maintains a steady eye contact and tells the child, give up on sweets. Now the mother, the child and Mr. Gandhi are satisfied. However, a mother is unhappy because what he did that day, he could have done three weeks ago. Now what stopped Mr. Gandhi in doing that then? To that, Mr. Gandhi replies that then I was an addict. I myself could not give up on sweets. So the three weeks which I took from you, I tried my hand at not trying sweets, not tasting sweets, and I actually started mastering the art of giving up sweets. And today, I have this ability to tell your child not to try sweets or not to be addicted to sweets. And he beautifully summed it up when he said, you can preach, but you got to practice, then your preaching becomes very, very powerful. Do you agree with that? Now the right way is that process. But then there cannot be a process without a person. Now if you look at the screen, it speaks two words. From mind to mouth, that is your thought to words. Now when Gandhi was approached by the mother first time, Mr. Gandhi's mind would have worked. He would have got a thought and he would have had the words to speak saying, give up on sugar. But he stopped. He stopped there for the next step. Can I have the next slide please? Then the process kicked in. And the process was from the mouth to the hand, or rather from the word to action. He wanted to master the art of giving up on sugar himself. And then he preached that. Now why am I trying to tell you this is because when I gave my example of when I became the president, people around me vanished. Is not because they wanted to put somebody on the seat and vanish. They believed that he got to discover it for himself. The nuances of leading. And that's the process. Now you may ask me, how can a process happen with one person? Process never happens with one person. That's not the idea here. The idea is seamlessly integrating this entire process of being a leader to leadership. And being a leader to leadership is from your thought to the word to the action. Yesterday and this morning, somewhere, sometime, someone on the stage made a seriously impactful statement. And that statement was, in China, we believe that happiness comes when the three elements are aligned. Right? If you want to be a pure, complete, right way leader, you got to have your alignment of your thought, your word, and your action. Do you agree with me? So that's the first step. Now if you all agree with me that this is fine, the thought, the word, and the action has to be aligned, Let's see what is right way leadership. Let's define what is right way leadership. Right way leadership, in simple words, is the bridge between what you say you believe and what 
you do. Is it making sense? Right way leadership is the bridge between what you say you believe and what you do. At this point of time, right way leadership is completely connected, related to you. It's personal. It's my belief against my action. Moving forward, let me give you an example. Anybody in the room recognizing this person excepting Mr. Nagaraj Rao? Yeah, the car manufacturer, Tata Industries. His name is J.R.D. Tata, which is written on the screen. He comes from a business house, the most respected business family in India. They are into technology, they are into manufacturing, they are into services, they are into hotels, they are into multiple things. But they are known for one word over a century of operation. And that word is trust. Let me give you a small incident from his life. Now this man, in the year 1932, decides that he will enter aviation airline industry. Now he had the money because he comes from a business family but he wanted technical expertise. So he collaborates with an Englishman Vincent, Neville Vincent and he comes with a deal and the deal is we divide the profits in two is to one ratio where I put in all the money I invest, but you invest your expertise. So for every one rupee we make, you get one part and I get two parts. So that was the deal and they sign a five-year agreement, a contract. And then the first year, after all expenses were written off, they make a profit of 60,000 rupees, 60,000 Indian rupee. Okay? Now that's your 6,000 RMB. Now that was all well, but back in those days in 1933, 60,000 meant a lot. The next year, they divide. The next year, they divide. The year after that, they follow the same contract. So finally, five years, the contract comes to an end, 1937. Now this time, the industry is flourishing. Their business has grown. And now it's time to renew the contract. At that time, the legal advisors of the Tata Sons tell Mr. Tata that it is not wise to sign the same contract. The numbers have changed. So, at the meeting, Mr. Tata tells Mr. Vincent that, listen, the deal is not going to happen this way. It's going to be different because you have not put in any money, we have put in the money, and blah and blah and blah, the whole thing is done. Visibly and obviously, Mr. Vincent is not happy. So they both close the meeting, they go back. The contract is not yet signed. When he goes back, Mr. Tata, somewhere in his heart, is not happy with what he did. So he goes back to his personal counsel, who he consults for all his personal legal matters and asks that this is what is being recommended. What do you suggest? So his personal counsel, Mr. Dadaji, he said, well, legally, what is recommended is right. Morally, may not be so right. So Mr. Tata wanted that trigger, that spark. Immediately, he picks up the telephone, calls up Mr. Vincent, and he says, listen, Forget about whatever we just spoke about the contract. The contract is going to stay the way it is. And we are going to sign to divide our shares in two is to one. The next morning when they come back to office, the legal counsel comes back, the official counsel, and comes back and says, why did you do that? And well, you know that you are a director of the company. You got to consult your co-directors. Why did you do that? And when this was asked, 
Mr. Tata replies this, and that's what you're going to see on the screen. He said, it was not right, and I just told him. Do you see an alignment of thoughts, words, and action? A year later, in 1938, Mr. Tata was elected to become the chairman of the Tata Trust. And its history, how he grew his company from strength to strength for the next 40 odd years where he was the chairman. That's just an example to prove you my point that right way leadership is the bridge between what you say you believe and what you do. Now let's understand the next dimension of it. We have understood what is right way leadership, what is a right way leader and who is a right way leader. But let's understand why. Why is right way leadership required and more importantly, why now? So let's do a small activity as to why right way leadership is required. I need a couple of volunteers who can come up and read a particular note which I'm going to give you on paper. One person who can come up on stage and read that note to people and this is an activity for all of you. The person is going to only assist me to do that. Next slide, please. Any person who's going to come up here? Yes. I saw you raising your hand first, so I give you the chance. Your name? Uh, Tommy. Tommy. Yeah. You're from? Uh, Shaman Toastmaster, Shaman University Toastmaster. Okay. So will you introduce yourself to them? Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Tommy from Shaman University Toastmasters Club. Very nice to meet you. Thank you, Tommy. So try this. You got to just read this. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. Wow. But they are going to listen to you because they are going to solve this problem for you. You're oh. just posing the problem to them and they are going to solve this problem. Okay. So people in the room, listen to Tommy. Wow. So uh, I start. Uh, call of conscience versus call of duty. You have a new young CEO of a company on whose board you are a director. 70% of the company's production was sold to a, governor, a government company that insists on receiving 2% of the involves as a kickback in cash. The bribe was shared systematically among a number of employees in the state-owned company. Our new CEO refused to pay the bribe. Stop. So are we clear till here? You are a director on the board of a company which has a young CEO. And your company is in the supply business to some government agency where you have a percentage of it to be given to them as a kickback for the order. And that amount, which you call as bribe, is systematically shared between everybody in the company. But you have a problem. Your CEO is not ready to pay the bribe. That's what he read till now. Yes. Continue. As a result, your company's bill was unpaid for nine months. The CEO tried everything. How did you read this word? Ca <laughs> cajoling. 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 Po politically influenced, cutting off supplies, but nothing worked. As the receivables mounted, you discovered one painful morning that your company was bankrupt and was ceased operations in two weeks. And 829 people would lose their jobs. Yeah, just stop. Okay. So because the CEO did not like to pay the bribe, your bills payable were stopped for the last nine months. So you have no revenue coming into your company for the last nine months. And now the situation has become grave where it has come to this that you cease to exist in two weeks. Not only that, 829 people will lose their jobs. You're the director of that company. Okay. In an emergency meeting of the board of directors, the CEO wanted the board's advice. It was the first time the board heard about these improper payments, although they had been going on for decades. But as you dug deeper, you discovered that your CEO had explored all possible options. It seemed to come to an either 
or either to pay the bride and save the company or to refuse and close it. So now the problem statement. The problem statement is now the decision has to be taken by you all as directors of that company, either to pay the bribe and get on with it, or to not to pay the bribe but to discover via media, understand different options to make the company run further. Of course, the CEO had not shared this with you, but you have understood that the CEO has tried all his might to make sure that the company is not in trouble. Right? So now, we stop here, but we want opinions. What are the options? What would you do as a director? What would you do to save the company? Or what is the choice you make? Two choices clearly told by Tommy is one, either pay the bribe and get on with it. Two, not pay the bribe, listen to the CEO and let the company close down in two weeks and 829 people will lose the job. Can you give a suggestion which can be different than these two options? Any volunteers in the room? Yes. Yes, indeed, it's a difficult decision. Um, but considering the fact that actually what is wrong is on the government, is out of your control. And behind that, you have all those people earning a living, living on your business. I think I will choose to take a compromise yeah, and, and say to pay the right so that the game can continue. Yeah. Okay, great. That's a brave answer. Give him a good round of applause. Yes, I see another hand going up. I think I would try something a little different. I would go public with the information so that all the employees know, as well as the community, uh, because the government should represent the community or the people. So that's what I would do and uh, try to hope this will get us around not having to pay the bribe by getting the community support. That's okay. what I would do. Thank so you. The other option is I go public. I tell it to people. I tell it to my employees who are at stake. Fantastic. One good round of applause to him, please. <laughs> Any other answers? I see one hand here. So uh, as the director of the company, I suppose that the CEO will uh, kindly follow your advice as to how to operate kindly, like, um, to make the best effort to save the company operational, uh, operational wise. Whereas you as a director, you more, more of, uh, I, I as a director, I would more or less consider the prestige or more of the public relation part of the company to, so as to uh, the, the, the 800 people, 800 something people that I lead still can work towards a goal to save or uh, keep its um, presence in the market, whereas that's a job they can do, whereas the job I can do is to decide whether the company, which direction the company would go, either go public with the current company uh, telling out uh, to, to us to build the, like, build the confidence in, in, like, in, in the public towards our leadership, uh, as, well as, to, to, as well as to lead as a, as a, as a director that um, under, the, under the leadership directorship of, uh, of me and the uh, leadership of the CEO, the people can still work toward owning the market so as they can change the name probably or just make bankruptcy and then um, do it again in a, in a Fantastic. Way. Stay there, stay there because there is a solution which this is a real case. This is a real case inspired from one of the multinational companies in India which was documented in one of the books called as the difficulty of being good. Now the solution is something very close to what he said. You know what the company did in the end? the board decided to close the company's government operations and retain only 30% business with the private sector. This meant that the companies would limp along for a while. The CEO promised to try vigorously to replace the lost business by gaining new customers in the private sector. Sadly, 390 workers lost their jobs. Now, what happened is clearly a matter of choice. 
we heard two opinions before this one said i will go ahead and pay the bribe because for me presenting and protecting my employees are important another person said no i am going to let the public decide and then let's go public with it and the other person said no we are going to work out something else each one of you sitting here you have an opinion it's not about what is right what is wrong what works what does not work what i am coming at is when you as a director take a stance you are putting not just your weight behind the ceo you are putting your thoughts your words your action behind him are you getting it normally there is a mismatch that's where i am trying to draw, draw your attention to normally you give your words you give your thoughts but you don't act or it's the other way you act but you don't have an alignment of your thought and your word that is what i would like to highlight through this exercise of right way leadership when you align your thought word and action that's right they had to lose out 390 people they could not find a flawless solution to the problem but then they all aligned themselves behind it now i want to read this and this is very important and that's what is going to be on the slide next later when the ceo was asked why he had to decide to blow the whistle and made his own life difficult he mumbled something about not having a choice it was clearly a call of conscience and not a call of duty at this case do you agree with this you know conscience is something which you cannot spot in one particular place you can't say it exists here but the beauty of it is it exists everywhere it is in no form but it's a voice without a form that's the beauty of conscience now we understood the why why right way leadership and what we need to understand now is the next step why now why is it necessary now why it is important that we talk about right way leadership now and that's the next activity we have two portions of the audience here so i want one person from this side to come up on the stage yes and i need another person from this side to come up on the stage near the white boards as the other person comes up your name and your club my name is zoe xie i come from kelto's masters in shenzhen thank you so much another volunteer yes My name is Eva Chen and I come from Shenzhen Toastmaster. Thank you so much. So now you got to wait because I'm going to ask some questions to them and they're going to give you answers and we got to write them down. Okay. Right? Just hold on and listen to this. The markers are there. Okay? Fine. So now this question is for all of us. Now we get together we are going to solve this. Is this okay? Herbert. Right? he was with me on that table or rather i'll put it this way i was with him on that table and when we were conversation having a conversation he mentioned that he comes from a university i come from education today i'm going to tell you the plight of affairs of education in my country and these are statistics let's see how it works the first contrasting data for you is a primary school teacher in dharampuri district in tamil nadu a southern state of india a man who has bicycled 32 kilometers each day for the past 25 years without missing a single day of school right a primary school teacher bicycled 32 kilometers for 25 years without missing a single day at school good fact now let us contrast with another story and this story comes to us from harvard university harvard university this is a research conducted by harvard professors and in the year 2003 they found this 
they they learned that in india in government primary schools out of every four teachers one of them do not turn up to school and the other one of them turns up to school but do not teach are you getting it so that means out of four there is 50% efficiency to start with one do not come to school and one out of the other three come to school but do not teach and on other side you see a primary school teacher cycling 32 kilometers for 25 years of his life not leaving one single day both happens in india and around the same time frame 2003 2005 because these articles were published then in the newspaper now my question to you friends let us now understand what made the primary school teacher do what he did whatever words you are going to give will be captured by her towards my right right shout out your answers what motivated the man to do what he did for 25 years care for students care for students okay yes responsibility yes self respect any other answers setting an example okay yes i'm sorry i'm not able to get that economic pressure public pressure economic pressure economic pressure okay economic pressure yes tragedy of the Uh, can you elaborate that because in this context that teacher is the only one in this context the responsibility that uses to four people okay interesting what my friend is trying to tell you is everybody's responsibility is nobody's responsibility yes right so it's basically lack of options he has no choice he got to be there am i right okay lack of options very interesting he says what if he is like a teacher who is like that second teacher in the four teacher group who shows up but does not teach he has done 25 years of service 32 kilometers a day not losing a single day what if he is not delivering the report also captured that over the years the students who passed out went on to become successful leaders in the country in different walks of life so that's not an assumption now okay so we close this chart now for a while we go back to this chart oh both of them have captured that <laughs> give them a good round of applause for being diligent in their work yeah <laughs> thank you so now four teachers one do not turn up out of every four and one who turns up do not teach what is the position where they are operating from why are they doing what they are doing any answers laziness okay any other answers laziness yes no interest okay lost interest lost interest okay they don't see the value okay salary so not good pay not good pay but still they want that pay so they're coming but not working right they not good pay it's interesting not good pay but still they are coming and not working so we have decided or they have decided that i'm okay with not good pay but i'm okay by not giving what i have so i'll get what i get without giving what i have okay lack of discipline no no support elaborate that
I think they have too much support from the administration because there are four people who are not bothered to do their work and the, they're not bothered about the administration at all. Right? No punishment. No punishment. This is interesting. Any other answers? No incentives. Do you agree with all this what we have captured here on the board? It's coming from you, right? So when the research was elaborated, when they said, okay, let's find out what is it, they came to this conclusion and that's on the next slide. Are you seeing it? The power of the principle against the power of position. Now tell me, which board is the power of principle and which board is the power of position? Here you have two boards on both the sides. Of course, this is the power of principle. So can you have a good round of applause for the power of principle here? The volunteer who tried to capture all the data for us. Thank you so much. Thank you. You can leave the mic there. And this is the power of position. Right? Thank you so much. Now look at the words which we have captured here. On the position we say laziness, lost interest, no value, low salary, no discipline, no punishment and no incentives. But there we have listed down certain things which is economic pressure, setting an example, self-respect, responsibility, care for students. The beauty is that is why we say it's the power of principle because majority of the times given all standard circumstances a person performs because of his or her ability to perform which is intrinsic. Are you getting it? It is internal drive. Having the same circumstances given everything in common nothing changes, person do not perform when the person res puts the responsibility of performance on external factors. Somebody said very interesting, no rewards, no incentives, lack of governance, no punishments. So if somebody is watching us, we do it. If nobody is watching us, we tend to not do it. Are you seeing it? So power of position and power of principle. So why am I trying to tell that now is because we all are leaders. Now tell me this. We all come to Toastmasters. We learn leadership skills. But do we keep those leadership skills only to our club meetings? Do we say, okay, these are skills which I learned out of this manual and this won't work in the world. I'm going to use it only in the club. Can you do that? No. We come here pick up the skills and then we go out in our daily lives and we try to apply that. Right? This morning, our keynote speaker gave a fantastic exercise for all of us. Where she said, when you go back to your rooms and in your silent spaces, when you look at that person who is standing in front of the mirror and when you have a conversation, tell that person that you are made for great things in the life. Add one more small question with your permission. When you do that exercise, ask yourself, am I operating from the position of power, position of principle? You're all leaders. You may be vice president of education, you may be presidents, you may be some associates in some companies, you may be chief executives, you may be directors, you may be CEOs. Are you operating from the position of a powerful place or are you operating from the position of principle? That's my next point. Now the last point for today is this. How to lead the right way. 
yeah why and why now is fine what it is is fine but how do we lead it and it's i'll make it really really simple if you look back for whatever we have discussed so far i have touched upon certain internal intrinsic factors your thoughts your words and your actions principles against positions and all that so i'm giving you four keywords to understand how we work next slide please and you got to do a couple of clickings here the first one is courage now when i say that you think of something and you need to speak it up do you need courage go back to that example from the story which mr nagaraja rao shared the mato story he thought about it and he spoke what he thought but there was courage exhibited whatever may be the thing which he spoke but he exhibited courage that's the first step so if you want to lead the right way you need courage and in my own way of putting it courage for you is the initiator just take today's example i say i want volunteers you thought i can be a volunteer right and to take the initiation you need courage because let me tell you this when you thought you can be the volunteer there are few others in the room they also thought they can be the volunteer but somehow they did not initiate because not that they lacked the courage at that point in time they did not match you if you were the volunteer with the equal amount or more than amo that amount of courage the next one please order now this is very interesting go back to the mato example there were two options but were there two options or were there three options do you go back to that example two options where he could choose one door and the other door but he also had an option of choosing the pole so in life when you are trying to align your thought and words into action you got to order and we normally use this as facilitating you got to facilitate yourself when you have the thoughts and you put them into words you got to facilitate yourself that okay what can be the way to go forward in normal parlance we use it as prioritizing you prioritize your steps and that's when you say the words have power what word you speak you prioritize and you speak that makes impact so courage is your first step order is your second step and then the third one the third one in how to lead the right way is responsibility and we have seen this word coming to us today when we talk about power of principle we said responsibility the mato story said about responsibility he said it's okay i don't know what is there in those two doors but i still know that this pain is mine and i'm going to own that up you got to own it the mother story the mother story was she owned up the child so she walked up she went up the high rising place and then she got it and last one is ethics now responsibility is the doing part but the preserving part is ethics and let me give you one line for ethics what you do anywhere is what you do everywhere i repeat that for you what you do anywhere is what you do everywhere it's very simple i don't have to talk more about it and that's why i say ethics is your preserver so if you look at the first four letters of all these words courage order responsibility and ethics it forms your core it forms your core and that core is the core of every human being if you get your core right you can lead the right way do i make sense is everybody with me now courage order responsibility and ethics now before i go on to the last slide i want to call those volunteers who came up on stage especially tommy who came up here to help me with the case please join me on stage i have a small thing for you give him a good round of applause 
I have this band which says right way leader but it also says courage order responsibility and ethics so Tommy I'm going to give you this as a part of my effort to leave back right way leadership in China so Tommy is a right way ambassador for all of us in China to join Tommy I need the other two three volunteers who came up and helped me with these boards yes please come This band is for you and this band is for you. Okay, so then I had one more volunteer. Anybody help me recollect? No, somebody who helped me with the mic. Yes, you come. Thank you. And I want you to wear this and show it to people around. Thank you so much. This is the line which I would like to leave you all with. And that line is, most of the time, the common way why we give up on pursuing the right way is assuming there is no right way. It's like in, in India we say, my way or the highway. Right? we feel at that point in time what we are doing is the right thing without getting the alignment of thoughts, words and actions. Right? So let us not do that mistake. Let's not do that mistake. And remember this, you don't have a moral right if you are not morally right. We don't have a moral right if we are not morally right. So let's not make that mistake of assuming that there is no right way. It's our inability to get the thought, the word and the action aligned. So this is what I would like to tell you. And thank you all for giving me this opportunity to share right way leadership with all of you. I want to thank Kelly. I want to thank Matt. and I also want to thank Michael for giving me this opportunity to come here and share this concept and this is going to be my little offering for all of you that each one of you have this ability to lead the right way it is just that you got to take that extra effort of aligning your thought the word and the action thank you so much Thank you, thank you, Dr. CSK. Please stay on stage. We invite DTM District 89 Director Kelly Guo come on stage to present a award.